Hey everyone, so I've been uh, working on that barn foundation and I felt like I needed a bit of break to do some uh, woodwork and do a bit of work in the workshop. So uh, in the last wind turbine video we made a really big nice uh, slow turning um, alternator, wind turbine alternator, actual flux alternator, but I put the old blades on and it actually worked really really well and I got really good power output out of it. Um, the trouble is, is that it had high peaks um, and then it wouldn't work that great in lower wind speeds and it would spin very very fast and uh, was quite noisy so I wanted to make some bigger blades to slow the whole thing down so that we get a more consistent lower wind speed start up and just a slower turbine that's less noisy and more reliable so that's why I'm doing I'm making some bigger blades and the reason bigger blades slow it down is because of a thing called a tip speed ratio when you have a, a larger blade you'll notice this in commercial turbines when the blades are larger they will spin much slower and it's because of the tip speed ratio and you can look that up um, but that's the goal here is make larger blades that will still work well at slower speeds so it keeps the noise down and it makes it slower more reliable um, so I didn't have the correct timber to do that with so I got some of this uh, basic construction timber CLS timber and I'm laminating a few of those pieces together to make a nice big blank and then we shall carve the wind turbine blades out of that. Our last blades were uh, 1.5 meters these are going to be 2 meters so we want to cut 400 off because these are 2.4 meter long pieces of timber okay and then that is going to get glued on there 200 millimeters down from the end so it's going to get glued on there at that point there So that's the bit that connects to the rotor, then we have a, a swelling, you know, this will be shaped, and then that's the blades. We've got two metre blades, but they're also considerably wider than the last ones, so hopefully be nice and efficient. You'll uh, probably notice all the stuff in the background in the workshop, and that's why we need a barn. The workshop has become the barn. Just want to make sure that grabs because it's trying to slide at the minute it grabs very quick this glue right then so they're all glued up i've also started carving the other two i thought i'd show you i've shown how to do this on camera a few times but these are a little bit different but the principle is the same first thing you've got to mark out stations let's run for it let's run for it so yeah first thing you have to do is mark out some stations so my design, it's my own design, because I just made it up basically because they're different size to any other guides you can get on the internet. So I've got my stations are going 320 to there, and then 400, and then 400 spacing. So we go 4, 8, 12, 16, new tape measure <laughs> a bit more spring than I'm used to so yeah mark out stations now I've got a pattern from one I've already done which I'm going to use and lay over it and just draw around it so it's all the same but if I didn't have that pattern this is what I do so what you do now is this edge stays straight we don't don't touch this edge but you need to taper this way, like that. So I'd go from here where I want this swelling to start up to there, and then I'd figure out what the minimum size of the tip I want is, which is about there somewhere. And then just mark down, and that's the taper to the blade. And uh, then we'll get to the next stage. So I've already done that. And then I freehanded this into a curve, and we ended up with this. So if you have a look, 
So all that was is that was that taper I just showed you. Did that taper down to where I wanted it, which was uh, finished at that line there. And then I just freehanded this this swelling here. And now just to keep them consistent, I can just draw around each one now. Then we just cut that out. So when carving anything, you want to remove 90% of the material in 10% of the time. And then that last 10% is where you do all the fine bits, but you just want to get all that big bits of material off straight away. I'm using a sander because of the fact the, um, the wood's laminated it means that the grain direction changes quite a lot and as a result it's quite hard to carve with hand tools we're going to do a bit of that but you have to be quite careful yeah. right i've taken that jacket off because it was too rustly on camera um right so next thing we've got to do is mark out I'm just going to a bit of paper now. got to mark out the twist so, so my measurements are 15 here 15 and then I've gone 20, 20, 25, 25, 33 I've gone here. If you ask me why I've done these, it's because uh, it's just how it, what looked right to me. And it was 50 then down to, down to there. So now it's just a case of joining them in a way in which they match. found last time I did have to... You can um, make it so it's sort of stepped and staggered, but it's obviously easier if it's just a straight line. The one thing I've noticed about when you make these is it really isn't rocket science. They do just tend to work. So we join them up to there, like that. And then I had a little bit of uh, flexible plastic around here somewhere. Where's that gone? There it is. And we go like that. Over to... It's about right there. Oops, that was wrong. There we go. So now, we want to take off everything from this side of the line over to this edge so it's uh, you know we don't take anything off of here and we go down to this line so I put in loads of cuts and we'll take that timber out of there
Right, so that's uh, blade number two roughed out on one side. But that's the hard side to do. The other side's just taking it down to thickness and shaping the aerofoil into it. Yeah, see there, fairly sizable blades, two meters. All right, so I've got all my um, blades carved on one side. And before we remove the flat bottom and this nice straight edge and everything, well, actually that stays, but the flat bottom will go. I wanna use that as a guide so I can cut my uh, 120 degree angles or 30 degree angles. Right, we're at the next stage. So this is the leading edge and uh, this is the tip. And I've just selected the thickness I want it to be at the tip, which is that. And then I'm drawing a taper along there that I'm happy with. I'm going a bit thicker than I have done in the past because they're a bit longer and I want them to be a bit stronger. So I've taken that taper now I'll measure down from this edge and I'll take notes. So I've got 20, 20, 24, 24, that's about 26, 30, uh, what was that? That was 30, yeah, 30, and 34. So now I can keep them consistent. So mark that on the other side now, and then all of this wood is going away. Right, that's the uh, blade's thickness now, with the twist. Take it off there. And it. So, if you have a look down it, so if I hold this end straight, you can see it's got a, a clear twist to it. So then it's much more twisted down the, this end than it is that end. And then we've got a tapered thickness from tip to base. Now what I need to do is I need to carve an aerofoil shape to this. So it's got sharp edges and a cut hump in the middle. And then that's one done. When I've carved these before, I used a single piece of good quality wood. This being laminated means I could be changing grain direction. It won't be going very fast down here, so it doesn't need to be that sharp. 
We'll just save the strength around there. Yeah, that's the shape currently. See that going down to a sharp edge. I'll just sharpen that now a little bit. But that's basically the shape. And then this one's a slight curve to it. And then a little curve in the middle. So it's like flat and then a slight curve. Well, that one I think is basically done, just needs a final sanding and, and balancing with the others, but we'll get the others to that stage first. Yeah, that is how you make a wind turbine blade. It's quite easy to do really, it's just a bit time consuming. Right, it's getting, uh, getting a bit later in the day. And I finally got all three blades done, so now i just got to uh, glue and screw a disc on in the middle. Everything's set up, we're all ready to go. This is very fast drying glue, so we've got to be quick. Right, get that on there. Uh, where's my mark? I've measured it so it centres as long as I've got them all on there in that line. I find these wind turbine blade carvings pretty fascinating to be honest. You know, you can just take some bits of wood and make wind turbine out of it, you know. And it's really actually not that difficult. It's surprisingly easy. Time consuming, but not difficult. And can be done with hand tools, you know, just a hand saw and some chisels and draw knife. In fact, you know, I do use some power tools when making them, speed things up a bit, but the first set I made, I think I used entirely hand tools. And you don't need to laminate the bits of wood, my other ones weren't laminated. It's just this is quite big now. If you're wondering why I'm doing this now, it's because it's only March. Let's have that last bit of glue there so we don't waste it. It's only, uh, so sorry, it's not even March and we're going to be starting that barn soon. And uh, it's not going to take that long to do that barn. And it's entirely likely that we won't get any decent sunny weather the whole time we're doing it. Which would put us in a very low power situation. And that's, that's why I'm trying to get this done now. Let me just get eye that up. Because uh, there's going to be four people at least working with power tools. And uh, we need, we're going to need a lot of power, you know. It's going to be four, four people going, mortises, um, um, drills, you know. There's just going to be a lot of power use. And this is going to do the job, pick up the slack. If uh, if there's no sun, if we're low on sun that time of year. Go that way a bit like that. Go that way a bit like that. Because yeah, this being the size that it is now, it's really just gonna tick along and produce a, you know quite a bit of power, even in very low wind speeds. So you know all my other ones have been really gusty turbines. You know they do huge amounts of power when there's a big gust. but we're never designed for low wind speed. This is just going to tick along, doing 500,000 watts, you know, all the time. And that's going to be very useful when we're doing that barn. 
Right, so it is the next day, late into the next day. I've been doing some other jobs and I've put some treatment on. It's not a stain on here, it's treatment. Um, if we do actually get lucky enough to have these blades last more than a couple of years, then uh, treatment has stopped this wood from rotting because it's a non-durable wood. But um, yeah, they don't tend to last that long, these wooden blades. They either, something goes wrong, it spins too fast and they break, or like the old ones there, um, plan was to keep them, but trouble is, is the leading edge wears away. Um, the, as the blades move through the air, and they move quite quickly, you know, 100 mile an hour or so, at least, sometimes even faster than that, depending on the turbine, uh, they can actually hit the speed of sound if the, if the turbine's not made right. Um, as they fire through the air at such speed, they hit into th like water droplets, and as they hit into those water droplets, it erodes that edge. So there's lots of things you can do. You know, you can fiberglass them and, and stuff, but to me, that's just like, I don't know, it's just a bit unnecessary. Like if the edge is eroding, that means that the fiberglass is gonna erode just slower. It just means it's spraying plastics everywhere. Do you know? So. Yeah, you just make a new pair every couple of years. That's my logic, really. So they don't take that long to make. Not expensive. Just use them till they break, make a new set. So this is all just wood. Uh, this linseed oil going on now, and a bit of preservative. There's no plastics spraying everywhere. Just do enough of that. Some, some plastic use and materials like that is really unavoidable. But in this case, it is actually avoidable, so we won't do it. If that dries in the next couple of hours, I'll mount it this evening. And then, sorry, I can't look at the camera, it's too bright. But yeah, if that dries in the next couple of hours, we'll go and mount it, get it up. There's no wind at the moment anyway, so there's not that much point. Just trying to get this on. not that easy. It'd be easier if it was the other way around but I haven't got anyone here to help me lift it. That should help. Should help a little bit. So there's that. Right, let's try and pull that up a bit. There we go, now we're getting it. Right, go and get the nuts. We're gonna have that. Bit of a pain them being that tight, but not a bad thing really. There's gonna be so much force on this now. <laughs> Looking at it now, I've been wondering if I've gone a bit overboard with it. I might have gone a little bit over the top. <laughs> Look at the size of it. Right, let's put it up. Right, I've been uh, trying to get my drone set up to film this, but uh, it's been in the workshop and the lens keeps fogging up and you can't see anything, so we'll have to just uh, do it with this camera. Right, nerve wracking. Scary, scary, scary. Let's see how we get on. Here we go. sun in my eyes a bit, can't really see what I'm doing. I think that's it there. A little bit extra, just in case. Really can't see much. 
What a monster. Right, let's do this nut up and then uh, see if we get any wind, get it going. So we got a little bit of wind, enough to uh, get the tur wind turbine spinning a little bit. But those big blades look pretty majestic, don't they? I think that looks pretty awesome. Oh, just uh, typical in it, just as I start recording, the wind slows down. Once I get a little bit more wind, um, when I mean a little bit more, I mean lots more. This is just a very slight breeze, really. So we have to quite a bit more wind before it's worth uh, doing any power output stuff, because this is just a couple of hundred watts, really. That's just in the gusts. It's really doing nothing at all when it's doing like that. But uh, I think you'll agree, it looks pretty majestic. Hey everyone, so a little bit of time has passed because uh, I didn't have much wind. Uh, but as you can see, we got a bit of wind coming in now. So uh, yeah, let's go and see what the power's doing. In the power shed. So uh, here's the wind turbine stuff. Uh, this is the controller and this is a clipper and this is the dump load. Um, so my original plan for, well, I needed to make new blades for this because first of all the old ones were quite small and they span too quick and it's too noisy. Uh, but the main reason was that the uh, leading edge of the blades was wearing out. Um, so I wanted to make these new blades and the goal of making these new blades is to slow the whole thing down so I don't get these huge peaks of power spinning really fast, noisy implodes, destroys itself. I just want it to work in low wind speeds and just be way more consistent, much slower, quieter. Um, and yeah, so I've managed to do that because I can change things on here a little bit and the bigger blades are more suited to going slower because the smaller the blades, the higher RPM you need to get the right tip speed ratio. Um, so I've successfully done that. I'll show you what sort of power we're getting. It's working really well in those low speeds. It's, do it's really consistently much better in lower wind speeds. It's just not quite doing as much of a peak output as I'd expect, but I'll show you now anyway. Okay, so you're currently watching the uh, live power output as the uh, turbine is doing its thing in the wind. So um, it's quite gusty as you can see. So what I've done is, um, in here I can change this wind track and I can change um, how I want the turbine to react. So what I've done is I've set it to start basically making power straight away, like really low down. So we've got voltage here and then ampage. So at 13 volts, it's going to start trying to make some power. And between 13 and 35 volts, it's going to try and do 8 amps. It's going to load it to 8 amps. And then I've got 20 amps. Now I've been messing with this quite a lot. And this is actually not an efficient way to get peak power. And this makes it inefficient but what it does do is it slows the turbine right down and it makes it make power in very low wind speeds and in high wind speeds it keeps it under control it keeps the the, the speed down a bit uh, so yes yeah, so, so I've got 45 volts 20 amps um, so I can change those if I want I mean if I bring those amps down it's going to speed it up a little bit and so on so I've been messing with it a bit and I found that this seems to work quite well for what I want which is a slow turbine slow reliable turbine so as you can see now we're doing uh, well what's that 100 200 250 watts at 35 volts and we're not having it probably doesn't look quite right on the camera because it distorts the speed but it's moving quite slow in comparison to how it would be if I um, if I turned the uh, voltage up to basically what it would like to be which is about twice as fast and it would make more power um, so what we're doing is we're running it low and slow um, it is, however, running a lot. It is, the, the output is less than I was expecting, I have to say. It's working really well down in that lower range now. So this area up to like 200 watts is perfect. That's that's ideal. Like it's, it's not taking much wind at all to get it up to that 200 watts. But then it kind of stalls out a little bit there and takes a really big gust then to get past it. So I think I need to mess around with the wind track a little bit more. I have seen a 1,000 watts, um, but it's very gusty. Uh, there's also an issue with the tail. Uh, the tail isn't big enough, I don't think. It co it's constantly turning and moving out of the wind. So I'm going to take the tail down and make it a different shape and slightly bigger because the bigger blades, it needs a new tail. 
So um, at the moment it furls out of the wind. If we get a big gust, you'll see the uh, power shoot up. But at the moment it furls out of the wind uh, about 800 to 1000 watts on a big peak. Uh, but as you can see there, it's slow right down there. There's barely any wind at all. And we're still making a little bit of power. I mean, only a little bit, but it'll build up when we get a little bit more wind. But that's really significant because it will always do that. It will always spin a little bit and it always put in a little bit of power. However, if you have a turbine, these small turbines, they want to spin really fast to be efficient. But to spin really fast to be efficient, they're really noisy and they break and they wear out and they're just not reliable. So I, I want a turbine that just trickles in sl small amounts of power reliably. Um, having it turned down like this does that. If I do turn it up a bit, so if I go onto this wind track here, I know this might be a bit boring for some, but if I do turn up the, uh, let's say turn up the volts by quite a bit, so let's put the starting volts up by quite a lot. So I put the starting volts up and put all the voltage just generally up. What you see is, is we'll make more power, but the turbine's gonna spin faster and get louder. So there, that's probably just about doubled it. You'll see it will, it will get higher peaks now, but it will, uh, it will spin faster. Unfortunately, it's just a bit gusty at the moment. So back in the shed, and you see I'm getting a bit of a gust now. And see, I've turned the turbine up so that we're now seeing much higher output. But you see the voltage is quite a lot higher, and I'm looking at the turbine now, and it's spinning really quickly. Um, a lot quicker than I want it to, because I don't like being around it, it's loud, and it's just uh, it's just not going to last. So I'm going to turn it back down, you see, we, see we're only doing, say, 200 odd watts at sort of 40 to 50 volts. Let's just let it stabilise a bit. If you have a look at the power output comparative to voltage, and the voltage is the speed that it's going basically. So we're seeing a much higher output, but it's running much faster. So there we go, I've just uh, turned it down again, and now you see we're just, just about spinning. It's not, we wait for a bit of a wind to come, so there you go. Um, but you can see we're now going to do 200 watts on you know, a fraction of the speed. So now we are basically set it up for just being in low wind. Now I can change that curve so it changes for different wind speeds. That's it. In fact, that is what I'm doing with it. But um, it always wants to favour spinning really quick and making a maximum output. I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to trick it into just always keeping low speed so it doesn't uh, just kill itself and fly to pieces. And that's what I want. I want that two, three, four, five hundred watts at a slow speed. I don't care about the um, maximum peak output because it's irrelevant. I want consistent, slow, low speed. And I think set low down like that is outputting more power overall because it's consistent. You see, we still do get some decent peaks, but it's just slower. It's doing it at a slower speed. So yeah, there we go. The uh, the goal of uh, trying to get the whole wind turbine just to work slower, more reliably, more consistently in, in lower wind speed has worked. The output's definitely lower than I'd expect. I don't have a wind speed meter because it broke, um, but I think it's it's about half what I'd expect it to be. I think a lot of that is the fact the tail's not big enough, so the, the turbine's always slightly at the wrong angle to the wind so it's running it very inefficiently so i need to basically make a bigger tail for it uh which not a big deal it's just a piece of plywood but it means i've got to drop the whole thing and to be honest with you i haven't got time i need to start with this uh this uh barn build as of uh, in the next few days so uh, it's making power it's giving us power we're getting somewhere with it um it'll keep us in uh, in power tools while we build the barn and then i'll have to just uh make a bigger tail for it and mess around with it in the future because i just don't have time at the moment but yeah it's working it's back up and running slow and steady should give us some power for our power tools on the barn all right hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching